How's it going? This is Fox back again for Sound Design Tutorials. Another massive tutorial today. Um, during one of my streams, I had a, go, I had a thought of uh, making some sequence sort of pads where one half is like a just a lovely rich evolving pad, and the other half is like a sequence sort of pluck. I did one with massive, one with serum, and one with absinthe. I'm going to be doing tutorials for all of them. This is the first one with massive. This is the sound that I came up with. There you go. Um, the pad on its own without that sequence bit is a really nice rich pad. I mean, they're all basic oscillators. It's all the, all the work and the movement and the richness you can hear is done by modulation of two LFOs. So yeah, um, I'll just say quickly, as I say, this was made during a stream. If you want to watch my streams or hear about my streams, you need to subscribe to my uh, Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter accounts. There'll be a link in the description. Facebook and Google Plus is Sound Design Tutorials. Twitter is at Sound Design Tuts. I also stream on Twitch. There'll be a link in the description. It's Sound Design Tutorials, all word. So yeah, if you if you want to watch me do some streams, then you need to sign up to them because that's the only way you're going to hear about when I'm going to do them. Uh, but yeah, we'll go ahead and initialize this, and I'll talk you through the sound. As I say, it was all three analog basic sounding waveforms. First one was a square saw wave. I pitch this one up one two octaves. Just quickly, these MIDI notes that I've got here are ranging from A2 to A3, so pretty standard where you're going to start anyway. A starting position is normally C3. So yeah, if it doesn't sound exactly the same, say so these chords are ranging from A2 to A3. But yeah, oscillate one I pitched up two octaves, had it smack bang in the middle, so it's a mixture between a square and a saw wave. Turn that down a bit, it's a bit harsh. Tensity on full, amp on full. This one was routed to filter one. We're going to use two separate filters here. Uh, that's the way we're going to get the uh, sort of sequence sound on one side and then the pad moving freely on the other. Oscillator two is a square saw wave as well. This one is more of a saw than a square. Just pull it back slightly, around about four o'clock on a clock dial. Pitch this one up one octave. Plus 12 semitones. Intensity on full, amp back slightly on this one. Okay, oscillator 3 is a sine square. This is a basic waveform as well. Wavetable position all the way to the left, so it's a sine wave. Turn it on. Pitch I'll keep this one out where it comes as standard. Uh, on naught octaves, so it's original starting position sounds like this. This is just a nice sort of floaty undertone of the sound. The amp back to about two o'clock. Intensity on full. This one is going to be routed only to filter two. You need to set the mix dead center between one and two, so whatever flows into the filters comes out equal amount. We are going to have the mix between the two filters in between serial and parallel. This is sort of hard to explain. Um, half the signal is going to go into a filter, both filters, and then come direct out, and half the signal is going to go into filter one and then come out of filter two. You don't really need to know what it does in all honesty, but you need to make sure it's dead centered to get the sound sounding exactly how I had it. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and set the routing out and the voicing and everything before we go ahead and do the modulations. It's how I set all of mine up. Click this top B, so the orange line goes all the way down through all the filters to FX1 first. Insert two needs to come after the filter filter stage, and as I say, make sure this orange line goes into FX1 first. Real straightforward. Insert 1 and insert 2 we don't use for this actually, so it doesn't really matter about the routing of them, but that's generally how I set all of my routing up before I get going. 
Um, I don't use any noise, any feedback, no modulation oscillator. As I say, there's a couple of effects on the master section at the end, but most of the work is done that gives it that evolving sound is done with these two LFOs. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and set up filter two first. This is an all-pass filter. Um, cut off to negative. We route them all to filter two. And the mix only to filter two. It's like a band pass running inside another filter, but it doesn't cut everything out and all pass. Real nice, real nice to use as sort of a phasing, a phasing effect, which is exactly what we're doing it for here. So oscillator three is routed directly to this filter, and oscillator two is half routed to this filter. So oscillator one is the one where we're going to be doing the sort of plucky plingy sound with another LFO that isn't going into this filter. So yeah, the LFO I used for this was LFO 6, you can use any one you want, as long as you get the settings the same as I had it. Um, I synced it to the master clock, set the ratio of 4 over 1, I think this is a bar for it to work, and we want it to sweep most of the frequencies all the way around to about 3 o'clock on a clock dial. effect that's having. I use this same LFO uh, on filter 2 once we've set it up to modulate the cutoff of that as well. This one is a bog standard low pass filter. Set this around to about 1 o'clock on a clock dial. Same LFO, positive to about 2 o'clock. Uncheck the restart button, we want the LFO to be free flowing, just keep moving behind all the MIDI notes. Okay, right, now this is where we get a bit complicated. Um, I use a performer on LFO 5 to control the volume of the amp of oscillator 1. Now, when you create a pluck, you apply either a snappy envelope to the amp or to a filter so it's closing it and open it closing really quick and we're going to do that with this performer in massive that's a stepper uh, think of uh, this these downwards sawtooth like that each one is going to be a pluck if I apply it to the amp you need to pull the amp down negative and we're going to use these performer shapes to whip it open then close it again if we solo this one oscillator, you can hear what effect it's happening. It zips to the top really quick and then closes it off over time to give it that sort of pingy plucky effect. Um, the rate for this is quite important. How I add it, I add it set synced and set to 1 over 4 which is quarter notes. Again, uncheck the restart button. We want this to just keep flowing through, just keep going non-stop. Crossfade sequence to the top, so we're only going to be using this top line of shapes. Okay, and uh, what we do now then is you can just go crazy with these curves and do what you want, but I'll draw it exactly how I had it so you get to see the rhythm that I had. You bear with me, just take a second.
missed one. That is a triple triangle down. Triple, double, and then a curve out. You can see what effect those faster ones have. It's going, each one of these steps is a beat. Bearing in mind, I'm on 174 BPM, so this is like uh, drum and bass sort of speed. Each one of these sections is a beat when you sync it to four over one, which I have. So if you've got four, like this quadruple one, that's like quarter notes almost, you'll hear it. This will be a double, like a semi quaver. That's a quaver, sorry, that's a semi quaver in musical terms. Can have a triple one which is like a dotted rhythm but yeah that's basically it i mean you can do what you want in regards to setting it up yourself but that's exactly how i add it i so say don't want restart you want it to keep cycling over we'll bring the other elements in now Still doesn't sound exactly like the one that we had at the start, that's because I did some rousting in the voicing section. Um, I'll give it eight voices unison, this is going to make it loud, I'm going to have to turn it down. Turn the pitch cut off on, slide this up so you can just see one of the little dots poking out the back. This is going to detune the new unison voices. Pan position on, all the way to full, pushing them new voices out wide. Unusual for me when I make pads, I usually use long sweeping envelopes, but all LFOs for this one. Um, the effects I used was a synced delay for effect one. Um, I had one over four, one over two, dry wet 10 o'clock, feedback about 11. I'll turn it on and off. This just helps smudge all the sounds together, thicken it out and sort of smear it, giving it that nice sort of dr dreamy sort of paddy feel. Let's with it off. And on. This chorus ensemble was one of the best choruses I've, I've heard still to this date. The only one that beats this, I think, is the one on Diva and Hive. A really, really thick, lovely sounding chorus. Uh, the dry wet on 10 o'clock, right about 9. Depth just back slightly. Okay, with EQ, I just booted the low, boosted the low section a bit just to make it a bit more prominent. I use this LFO6, this uh, waving triangle one, on the high shelf. This is a neat trick as well, just to give a bit more movement. Again, I'll turn the EQ on and off so you can hear the difference. Let's do it off. Just adds a bit more sparkle and a bit more shine to the high end of the sound. There you go, lovely evolving pad, sequenced pad, half of it is being modulated by a performer giving it that plucky sound and the other half is just doing its own sort of uh, paddy magic. <laughs> yeah, I'll pitch this down an octave or so, so you can hear what it sounds like a bit lower down, that's all that. This 
this mix slider, you control between the two filters, the more you go to mix one, the more prominent the uh, plucky part of the pad is going to sound. So another neat trick, if we uh, pitch that back up an octave again, roll that pitch up. If we pitch the sub down an octave, the sine wave, boost the intensity of this. It's going to give a nice subby humming for the sound. Easy to do, Just pitch it up an octave, pitch it down an octave, increase the intensity of the sine. Really nice pad this, really happy with it. I'm gonna save this as, what did I have it as? Sequenced pad. Yes. Well there you have it, I say a lovely sort of split pad. Half sequenced, half just free roaming pad. As always, make sure you subscribe if you enjoyed this. Plenty more massive tutorials and streams to come. As I said earlier on, if you want to check out my streams, make sure you subscribe to one of my Facebook, Google Plus or Twitter accounts. It's the only way you're going to hear about when I'm going to be doing these streams. But yeah, for now, that's it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.